So you want to start trading in the Nairobi Stock Exchange and nowadays it's been made possible for you to do what you call online trading. How do you go about it? How do you start stock trading in Kenya? How do you start share trading in Kenya? Whatever you want to call it. Guys, welcome to Kenya's Money Matters and today we're going to be looking at how to start your trading in NSC, Nairobi Stock Exchange. How do you start the process of trading shares? How do you go about it? How do you make sure that you can profit from different price fluctuations in these shares? Now, for those who don't know, I have done a video on how to buy shares. That was way before, so we need an update, right? And this update is coming up with, you know, a ways in which you can also trade because a lot of people are asking, can you actually trade shares in Kenya? Trading here would be a bit more active, I would say, and then investing is different. There are two different ways of going about it. Either you're trading it, Basically, you tend to benefit from small price fluctuations or you are investing in shares, which means you're buying it for the long term. It will still apply in both scenarios. The process is still the same, but I'm going to be talking about trading because some people want to start trading. I'm having some flu, so forgive me. My eyes are a bit watery. Why do you have to trade shares anyway? And of course, before we get there, we need to know what are shares and why do you need to trade them and then we know the process right a very simple simple straightforward thing number one shares are just basically buying parts of a company so you're buying an equity you're buying a share of a company you're buying a part of a company you start owning part of that company in the nsc which is the platform nairobi stock exchange is basically a platform that has been created that has listed companies so all the companies that are publicly listed can be found in nairobi stock exchange so the stock exchange is that platform is the place whereby we can now go and buy these companies because you don't want to walk into the company and buy it. It doesn't happen like that. So the stock exchange is where you go and buy. It's the supermarket where we go and buy these companies. In Nairobi Stock Exchange at the moment, we have 63 listed companies. 63 listed companies. So you can buy any of them. You can choose whatever you want, depending of course on your needs. That is one. Number two, these 63 listed companies are from different sectors and we have over 11 sectors so it's not just from one sector so we have the banking sector agricultural sector production and manufacturing sector we have insurance sector we have investment sector investment services sector we have telecommunications sector we have commercial services sector we have construction sector we have automobile sector and we have energy and petroleum sector there are many sectors so you can go and see some of these sectors if you go to Nairobi stock exchange website you will see lots of them listed right there the next question would be so why would you want to trade stocks you want to benefit in the price fluctuations of that particular stock right because the reason they are listed is because they are looking for funds and these companies are continuously either growing or some are also not growing some are also losing in terms of price so the price of a company is always fluctuating the price of a share of a company is always fluctuating it could be at 50 shillings today, tomorrow it's at 53 shillings. It could be at 50 shillings today, tomorrow it's at 48 shillings. So it can be going down and up. Someone who is trading would want to benefit in these price fluctuations. And that is why you trade stocks. Because if you buy it at 50 and you sell it at 52, you make a profit. Okay? If you buy it at 50 and you sell it at 48, you made a loss. So that again is something you have to remember when you start trading. And then we have what we call short selling. So we have two positions that you can hold. You can either buy or you can sell. Selling is whereby you predict that the price of a particular asset is going to go down and therefore you sell it. So it's like you're borrowing stocks that you don't have. You're selling them, then you buy them back later at a discounted price. This is something that's a bit complex for beginners to understand, but you can do what we call short selling. It's whereby you decide this asset is going to go down in price and therefore I'm going to short sell it and when it goes down, I'm going to buy it back. Basically, the broker is borrowing you those shares that you don't have. You sell them at that particular point, then you buy them back when the price is lower. That's what we call short selling. So there are two positions. You can either go long, which is buying, or you can go short, which is selling. So of course, the reason you're buying or selling is because you want to benefit in those price fluctuations. Nowadays, it's possible to buy and sell as soon as you want. So number one, figure out what assets you want to invest in. 
Before you start the process of trading, you want to know which assets do you want to invest in. The Nairobi Stock Exchange has different assets. It has bonds, it has derivatives, it has stocks, it has ETFs, it has mutual funds, it has indices. So you have to decide what asset do you want to trade. One thing you could actually consider when you want to start trading in particular asset is the kind of analysis you want to do. So there are two types of analysis. You could do what you call technical analysis or fundamental analysis. So technical analysis is whereby you look in the chart the historical performance of that stock. You're looking at the chart right in front of you and therefore it's called charting options. So you're charting it and trying to determine what is the next level that this price could hit. You determine different price reaction levels for that chart. You determine the historical performance and movement of that particular stock or asset and then you try to determine where it's going to go to next. That's technical analysis uh, which I also teach Actually, when you're trading Forex, it's the same thing. When I'm trading Forex, I teach Forex, I teach people trading stocks, and I tell you how you can do that charting in a very easy way. Now, the other way is fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis, you want to look at the company financials. You want to look at the management of the company. You want to look at their position. You want to look at their future. You want to look at other factors like political factors, economic factors, social factors, things that are outside that chart that affect the price of that particular stock. That's fundamental analysis, so you have to be aware. The kind of asset you're going to trade should depend on the kind of analysis you want to do. So that again depends on you. But yes, you decide which asset do you want to trade. Go to NSE, decide which asset you want to trade. And then second one is choose your securities wisely. When you talk about securities, we're just talking about same assets. But now in this case, we're looking at securities in terms of, if you choose, let's say, rates. Rates are basically real estate investment trusts. Do you know how to trade them? If you choose to trade stocks, why are you choosing stocks? For example, let's say you choose to trade Safaricom. Are you choosing to trade Safaricom because Safaricom is a big company? Or are you choosing to trade Safaricom because there's something about Safaricom that would help you trade it in an easier way? One thing you must remember that these big companies that people keep mentioning that you can invest in, which are actually good to invest in, might not be the best ones for trading. If you are going to trade, you need to look for smaller companies that are undervalued. You want to look at undervalued companies, right? So you want to find the companies that the price is below the market value. Buy it and hope that it goes up. What Warren Buffet uses as value investing. So you find companies that are small companies. They have good fundamentals, but they haven't yet been discovered properly. And they don't have investors hoping that the prices will go up at some point. Of course, the risk is it might never actually shoot. And therefore, you end up losing your money. Again, there are other factors you could consider before you pick your security. So pick them wisely. Don't go for the big names just because, yeah, this is a big stock, this is a big name. No. Pick your securities wisely. Know why you are picking them. And don't just go for it because it's a big company. Most big companies don't have huge price fluctuations. And that makes it difficult to make any money. So you need companies that still have room for movement. They still have room for growth. Okay? And they have room for fluctuation in their prices. These companies that people do talk about a lot are quite stable. So the price movements won't be as much. So choose wisely. So whether you're choosing an ETF or a rate or you're choosing a mutual fund or you're choosing um, an indices uh, to trade or you're choosing uh, particular stocks to trade or bonds to trade, you must know what are the fundamentals making you choose those securities. Then, of course, you want to choose a broker. I've done a video on the list of brokers in Kenya. The listed brokers, the registered brokers in Kenya, is actually a very open source in Nairobi Stock Exchange website. You can find all the listed brokers. Now, when you're choosing a broker, this is where you also have to consider you're going to be trading. As a trader, for example, you're going to be trading every single day or every two days, depending on the frequency of your trading. So you need to remember that you're going to be a trader and you want access to a platform. So it means you might want a broker who has the right platform for you, a platform that could allow you to day trade, a platform that could allow you to swing trade. A platform that could allow you to do things quite fast. So what do you want to consider when you choose your broker? Are they registered brokers? Do they have a good platform? Do they have good history? Do they have good management? What is their testimonial? Do people know about them? How long have they been in the market? You want to look at your broker as your bank. It's someone who's going to be keeping your money, keeping your stocks, you know, helping you buy. Again, it's very good to have a broker because they understand the markets better. So if you get a good broker, you could be getting financial advice to some level for free. Of course, they charge you for fees, for trading for you, for putting in uh, requests and selling your stocks and shares that you may have uh, bought. All these things have commissions and fees, but you want to understand that these people have more detailed research of the market than you probably do. So they could give you more advice on if you want to day trade, which one should you buy? If you want to invest for the long term, 
which companies do you want to buy so you must consider which broker you having and are they knowledgeable enough have they been in the market long enough for them to guide you on this journey but when you're trading one very important thing is do they have a platform that you can easily access and easily trade with so don't just pick a broker for the sake of it when you go there look at their platform ask questions and that way you get to know but number one reason number one condition is registered brokers and like i said they're all listed in nse and then the next step is opening a cds account now this is something i've said all over and over again this is the same thing you have to have a central depository system this is where your stocks will be kept this is like a bank for your stocks if you want to trade stocks in kenya whether you're investing in stocks whether you're trading stocks in kenya you must have a cds account now sometimes the broker can help you open a cds account or you can open a cds account for you to open a CDS account, it's a very direct process. All you need is two color passport size photographs. You need a KRA pin, national ID or a passport, evidence of residence and evidence of your income. That's all you need to open a CDS account. And you can go online to central depository system and open a CDS account anytime you want. So when you have your CDS account, you have your broker, you have your CDS account, you decided which securities and which assets you want to buy. You decided what kind of analysis you want to be doing. All you have to do is now the last point is choose your stocks so you go in there say the stocks you want to buy choose it and buy it that's as simple as it is choose the stock you want to buy and get trading you are now a trader and an investor so of course the only difference is if you buy safaricom for example and leave it there for long term that is investing if you trade it within short period of times because you want to make money you are actively trading so there are different types of traders you know it depends on how long you are in the market but after doing all those things, the only thing remaining is to choose your stock, buy that stock, and benefit from the price fluctuations. Now, one question that people keep asking is how much money do you need to start? Most of the time, you just need to buy at least 100 shares. So if a company is trailing for, let's say, 40, 40 per share, it means you have to invest at least 4,000. So it will depend, again, on the share price of that stock that you're choosing, right? So if it's 40, you need to invest 4,000 for you to have a minimum of 100 shares. So yes, you should have a minimum of 100 shares that will determine how much you need, depending on the price of the stock. If the stock is 5 bob, then you only need 500 shillings to get started, as low as possible. Like I said, you don't have to go for the big stocks. You can go for always the small stocks. Remember, this trading can be risky because you can also lose money, but it has the potential of making you lots of money. Thank you guys, and I hope that is helpful. Let me know in the comments section below, and please subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the video and what you'd want me to do next. As usual, at Kensman Matters, let's